purpose of this video is to teach a particular method of painting Australian landscapes in oil. The technique I'm about to show you may conflict with traditional methods you may have already learned. If you have learned traditional oil painting before, I suggest that you follow my instructions entirely and do not try to combine with what you have learned previously with what I'm about to show you. The lesson is designed for people who have never painted in oils before and if you follow the instructions correctly, you will be able to paint a nice landscape in a reasonable amount of time and effort. The first two paintings we're going to do are in monocolour, that is burnt umber and white only. The purpose of this is so you'll be able to learn to use the tools and practice the technique without being confused with colour. This is the first monocolour painting we'll be doing and in that I will show you how to do sky, background mountains, background trees, grass and the big foreground trees. This is the second exercise and in this I will show you how to do water. It's a similar painting to the first brown one but we will include water. Then we'll progress to the coloured paintings. In this first coloured painting I will show you how to do these foreground mountains with the little trees on. Then we'll do a little cottage in the forest. Then we'll do a sunset and then we'll do a waterfall as a final exercise. All the exercises I'll show you, I'm going to do on the same size board. I'll do them on a 12 by 16 inch board. Now I have a list of materials to show you, everything you will need to complete the course. Here is a list of oil colours you will need to complete the course. I suggest you take a note of these. Except for these two colours, French Ultramarine and Aloe Brazilian Crimson, all the other colours we use straight from the tube. This there are six brushes and one painting knife we'll use. The number 12 round hog bristle brush, the number 8 round hog bristle brush, the number 8 flat hog bristle, the number 4 soft round, the number 2 fan, and a 4 inch flat brush. This is a common house painting brush. We also use a cranked painting knife. I haven't a size on the painting knife as various brands of painting knives have various sizes. But select the pointed painting knife which is slightly flexible. Here are the oddments you will need. Prepared artist canvas. Prepared artist canvas is prepared ready to accept the oil paint. I insist that you use this type of canvas because if you use an inferior type of canvas, you will not get the effect that I'm trying to show you. Linseed oil to mix the paint with. Turpentine. Clean your brushes. We need masking tape to tape off the picture. Clean rags for cleaning the brushes as you work. And these little plastic bags. I'll show you what they're for in a moment. They're just a sandwich bag. I'll show you now how to mix your purple out of these two colours, the French Ultramarine and the Alizillian Crimson. First of all, we get a little sandwich bag, squeeze the paint blue first, or crimson, it doesn't matter. Now I'll put about half and half in there. And just a dribble of linseed oil, about a teaspoon I put. Then we can tie a knot in the bag. Mix the paint. little hole in the corner and the paint's easier to squeeze out. 
I'm going to put all my paints in these plastic bags just so I can add a little bit of linseed oil to get them flexible. They're a little bit thinner than what they come when they're in the tube. That's about a medium purple. It's not a red purple, it's not a blue purple. So that's how we mix that purple. It's the only colour we mix together. The other colours are straight out of the tube. Now we're about to start our first exercise. That's this brown painting. We're going to do this one. I've placed my artist canvas on a builder's board. That's quite a solid builder's board I've got behind there. And I've marked out the area in masking tape. Up here I have my palette. It's a vertical palette. I like you to have your palette up there because that's where you can practice your brush strokes. And your different styles of using the brush. And that's where you can practice everything before you put it on the painting. So we'll start with the sky. Take a bit of white paint and rub it into the canvas. It's most important that you rub the paint right into the pores of the canvas. Because the first mistake people make is they make their paint too thick on the sky. So I'm going to rub this white paint into the pores of the canvas for two thirds of the way down the painting. You can use your fingers to rub it in or the heel of your hand. On a bigger painting it's better to use the heel of your hand to rub it right into the canvas. All over the top two thirds of the board. As I'm doing this and as I'm painting and showing you what to do I'm going to constantly refer to the mental attitude you should adopt when you're painting. And don't underestimate this mental attitude. When I say don't worry about a thing I mean don't worry about it, we'll fix it up later. Because if you fiddle, fiddle, fiddle with some little point that's possibly not important, you waste your time and you could be doing something else and painting. So you'll notice there I rub a bit of burnt umber into each corner and then I'm bringing it down into the white. The important thing is here that I want brilliant white down here, a darker shade of burnt umber in each corner. Rub it right into the canvas again. And that is your basic sky. Now for the clouds. With the clouds, we take a little bit of burnt umber, round and round and round and round and round, like that. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Put a little bit of white up on that side of your finger. Put it there and rub it round and round. Now this is what I want you to practice. Painting clouds is easy. If you sit down and practice for a while, you'll find that you learn the round and round motion and clouds just come off your finger. So over here on your practice board, make a medium colour there, rub it right in. Take a little bit of white on the side of your finger and rub round and round motion and as you rub tilt your finger for the paint to come off and as we have the light shining in this direction in all these exercises the paint will come off this side of your finger and you move your finger away so as not to destroy the clouds as you make them the movement you're doing is similar to rubbing ointment on a bruise or something like that just practice practice and eventually you'll find the stroke that just produces clouds. And when you do that, you can just put clouds on any time you like, and all you have to think about is where to put the clouds. So that'll do at the moment. You must have a white background in the bottom of your clouds. And keep your paint as thin as possible. Because we're painting wet paint straight over wet paint. The thinner you have your undercoat, the better the paint will come off the brush on the second coat, which will be the mountains. Now before we go on to the mountains, I want to brush the clouds over with this big flat brush. That gives them a movement. And then we can continue with the mountains. Pick up a little bit of colour on your finger and then make a pleasant shaped mountain. That's not pleasant. So we won't have mountains that shape. We'll bring them pleasant shapes. Like that. 
Those mountains are a little bit higher than what I'd like. I usually bring them up halfway up the board. That'll do at the moment. We have the light shining in this direction, therefore this side of each mountain will be gaining more light than the other side with the sun shining on it. So we can lighten that side of each mountain. If you have a mountain and it's darker than the other, it means that mountain is in front of that mountain. So keep the darker mountains in front of the lighter mountains. And we're making this up as we go along. So if there's a mistake, you soon change it. If that mountain was too dark, we could bring it down in front of the other one. So it's just a purely eliminating your mistakes as you're going along by covering them up with something else. So that's our distant mountains. Now we'll do distant trees. We take the big round brush, load it with burnt umber, and block out the bits of mountains you don't like. Here again, we are eliminating our mistakes by crossing out the bits that don't look too good. If you see a bit of mountain you like, you leave it there. If you see a bit you don't like, you cross it out. This down brush stroke is about the best way to block out your background trees. It gives the shape of a tree being a big round brush. Now I want to explain a bit about arrangement here. I've got the trees bigger on the outside than in the inside. I've got the corners darker here than what the rest of the sky is. And this is to bring your eye in. We're trying to have something that attracts your eye into the middle of the picture. So as we work, we constantly think that everything slopes into the picture, the lighter colours are in the middle, and this sucks your eye into the middle of the picture and makes it a much more interesting picture. So we've got the sky, the clouds, the background mountains, and here we've blocked out the background trees. Now we'll put some foliage on the background trees. I'll pick up some white paint on my brush, I'm going to show you how to do this in a moment, and then put the sun shining again on this edge of the background trees. Now this is a brush stroke that you should practice until you learn it. And when you learn it, your hand will take over the foliage and all you have to concentrate on is where to put the foliage. So, here we are. Now this is the brush stroke. I'll show you over here on this practice bit. You pick the paint up by bringing the brush towards you. The brush is forming a chisel point. This is a new brush. It's working quite well already. You only have paint on one side of the brush. You dab the brush almost perpendicularly onto the board which gives you these little mushroom shapes. And when you can get these little mushroom shapes coming off the paint, coming off the brush freely, then you can practice making the mushroom shapes into big umbrella shapes. And this is the basis for the shapes of the gum tree. So we'll finish this bit over here little mushroom shapes into bigger umbrella shapes. I'm trying to keep the sun shining on this side of the trees, but on this side of the painting we can put it shining on the other side of the trees. It's not correct to do that, but we can get away with it because it adds interest to the painting and again it brings your eye into the middle of the painting. I'll quickly follow to finish these trees off. I do a lot of the painting with my fingers. You might prefer to use a brush, but I prefer to put the paint on with my fingers in some places. I'm rubbing painting here, this is the background. The background, you need a white background. This gives you perspective, and as you come forward, you can come into the darker tones. Don't mix your paint completely, just put it on roughly in big blobs. If this was water, we'd be putting it on much finer like we do the sky, but because it's done on a big grass, I'll put it on quite thickly and I come down to the dark corners. The dark corners again give you the perspective and suck your eye into the middle. So that's our background trees and our grassy area. I'm going to turn that area into grass now with a fan brush. It's a simple brush to use. Dab, 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 dab. All this grass. Just dab it like that in the distance. 
right across the phone and back again. And as I come forward, I'm going to become more vibrant with the brush stroke because the grass becomes longer when it's closer to you. And then when I move down towards the corners, I'll have quite big brush strokes. It was the big grass effect. Now I'm holding the brush lightly, just placing on the paint and flicking it up. Also, you'll notice I'm curving the paint in here, curving the grass in to give us this sucking the eye in effect. And here again, I'll bring the paint in. Now we have to put these big trees in. They're done with a painting knife. Sometimes loading the painting knife takes longer than unloading the painting knife. Very important exactly how you put the paint on the knife because that will determine how the paint will come off the knife. Here I'm putting the paint in a neat little line where I can pick it up easily. And I'm constantly wiping the knife. It's very important to have a clean knife all the time. If you want to make a clean white line, you need a clean knife. If the knife's dirty at all, and you pick up the white paint, you will not get a white line. So it's important to clean your knife every time before you pick up new paint. And here again, I'll arrange the paint so it's easy to pick up. Wipe the knife, arrange the knife, wipe the knife again. Now the trees we're doing are going to have sunlight shining on this side, so I'll pick the darker paint up on that side of the knife and the lighter paint on the other side of the knife. And that gives us the two colours, one this side and one the other side. Now I'll turn it over and put the tree down through here. Now I'm going to work out where to put the tree. I want it sloping into the picture. I don't want it crossing this intersection here or spoiling any good trees. So we'll bring it down through there. Just place it on and you sculpture the tree. It's like plastering. Drag it down and unload the knife down the bottom. Wipe the knife clean. Reload it. And do it again. That gives us a nice forky tree effect. You're very lucky to get it out in one stroke sometimes, so sometimes you have to touch them up. I like a nice dark butt on the tree, you sculpture that in again. Plenty of paint when you're painting with a knife. Very thick. We'll tidy this little bit up down here. Now we'll do the big tree on the other side. I'll load the knife again. and again decide where to put the tree. We don't want to destroy anything over here or cross where those intersections are. Also, don't try to change the direction of the tree on the line of the top of the trees or here. If you want to change the direction of the tree, change it in the middle of something. So we'll come down through here. And another big branch down here we'll put, big tree trunk. This time I'm putting one colour on at once because it's a much bigger tree trunk down through here. We can put the dark on first and then the white and blend them a little bit. It makes it look like bark a bit. Here we are. And the big butt of the tree, the dark butt. Well, that's the tree without detail. We'll detail it now. And with the knife, you can load it up with a little bit of white and just touch it on the high bits of the paint and give you a bark effect. Do the other one too. So that's the tree trunks with a palette knife. Next we do it with the little round brush we give you all the branches. Just put these in and I'll show you a few secrets about this little round brush.
When you're loading this little round brush, you pick up two paints at one time. You pick up one colour on one side, turn your brush completely over and pick up the other colour on the other side. Hold the brush vertical and drag it up the painting, twisting it, and you'll find that the colour changes as you twist it backwards and forwards. This is how we do branches, and this gives the effect of the sun shining on some parts of the branches and not the others. So you should practice with your little round brush over here, load it with two colours, and just keep unloading it so you can get this one and two colour effect. The line will change colour as it goes along. Now with branches, I'll show you the shape that you should try to get. It's a jagged shape, not a curve, but a jagged shape. So, load the two colours, twist your brush, and try this jagged movement. That brush is a bit dirty, I'll wipe it again. Reload it. You don't have to worry if the branches don't always turn out, because when you put your foliage on, you'll cover up the branches that aren't so good, and you'll leave the branches that look alright. So you can put a lot more branches on than what you need. So you have plenty to cover up or plenty to leave. So that'll do at the moment there. And I want to put some branches in these background trees. They're just vertical lines. And they're always on the dark part of the tree because that's where you see under the foliage and you see the branches in amongst the trees. Try not to make your trees look like soldiers if you can. Try to have them disorganised, different shapes, different sizes. Often you might find that your foliage is turning out like a permanent wave. Well, if this happens, you can give it a few dobs here and there and make it look not so organised. It'll do there. Now, you can get little bits of bark hanging off these trees by picking up blobs of paint let them roll off the edge of your brush. It's a paint, often there's this piece of paint there and it shouldn't be there, it's an asset. You can turn it into a little piece of bark hanging off or something. Always like a little bit of bark hanging off the bottom of the trees too, it looks nice. And around this area. And this brush also can be used for little twigs on the ground. Same, same brush stroke, just load both sides of the brush and roll it as you unload it. Jagged movements. It's crisscross, cross, crisscross brush stroke. Very handy too. A little twig effect on the ground. Finish this big tree over here now. I'm trying to have all the branches come into the picture. This one here comes up out of the picture, but we'll be putting foliage there later and you won't see a lot of it. Load the brush again. And that's about enough branches. I'm going to show you how to do the foliage on the top of the trees. Take the big brush, clean it. As I clean it, I pull it to a chisel point. Then I pick up the dark paint first by pulling the brush towards me. That light paint's not clean. I'll clean it a bit by taking the dirt off it. Now I've picked up the dark paint on one side. I'll pick up the lighter paint on the other side. It's important to pick up the dark paint first because you want the light paint to come off the top of the brush. So there I've got a chisel shaped brush with white on one side and dark on the other. I'm going to put the foliage up here. So I dob the brush vertically onto the board and again do these mushroom shapes. Keep it dark and uninteresting in the corner of the painting. You don't want a person's eye to travel into the corner of the painting. You want to keep their eye back into the middle. So have things curved into the middle of the painting. That's not a very good lot of brush strokes there, but that's not the most important part of the painting. So we'll leave it like that. And again the other one on this side. Pick up the dark on one side, the light on the other, dragging the brush towards you, and unload it in the dab, 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 little mushroom shapes. I'm crossing out the bits of branches I don't particularly like. Load the brush again. The brush is getting a bit dirty, I'll have to clean it now. Pull it to a chisel point. Pull it towards you when you're loading it. 
that, that, that. So that's almost finished this painting now. I've just got to tidy up around the bottom with the fan brush and tidy the grass up around the bottom of the tree. If you have a problem getting your tree looking like it joins the ground, rub a bit of dark in underneath it and you find it looks more like it actually goes into the ground there. Cover up the twigs that don't look too good. Keep your grass sloping in towards the middle. And there we are. I'll pull the masking tape off now and you'll find that we have quite a nice little picture. That's about the simplest one. The next one we'll do, we'll do a bit of water. And if you practice these monocolour paintings, you'll learn to use the brush and then you can progress to the colour and you can concentrate on arrangement and colour and perspective without worrying about unloading your brush. So it's most important that you practice these little monocolour paintings as much as you can to just learn to use the tools, learn to use the tools so you can just put the paint on wherever you want it without any troubles at all. I've got to sign that now. An easy way to sign it is with the back of your brush you can scratch your name into the wet paint. Now that's a simple little one. Have a go at that. You might want to do it half a dozen times until you can do it with your eyes shut. Now the next one we're going to do is similar to the last one, but it's got water in it. Again we start on the sky, rub the white right in, two thirds of the way down the board. Rub it in down the bottom here where we're going to have water also. Right into the board. You can rub it in later, this undercoat for water, but I'll rub it in now while I'm on the job. Again, we darken the corners first and blend them down. It doesn't take much burnt umber to darken them corners and mix in with the white. Later on when we're working in the blue, you'll find the blue is an extremely strong colour and only a little dob is enough to colour the whole board. So be careful you don't put too much on there. I've got that quite thin there. And again I'll do the clouds. I'll do them slowly for you so you might be able to watch exactly how the paint's coming off. It's not really important to make a cloud shape when you're putting the undercoat on. Any shape will do really. You can sign your name there even if you wanted to. But with the white, do it slow. You might be able to get the white to roll off exactly where you want it. After you practice this for a while, you can copy existing clouds. You'll be able to let the paint come off your finger where you want to. But at this stage, you should just try and get that motion that gives you the fluffy cloud effect. And that'll do for clouds in this one. Or oh, we might put a few little clouds here and there's a nice little bit here on there somewhere. Brush them over with a big brush. Make them look like they're moving. This takes them back also. If you don't brush them over, they look quite good not brushed over, but if you don't brush them over, they stand out a little bit too much. These mountains, I'll make little mountains this time. Pleasant shapes. We'll pick the darkest mountain for the foreground mountain. I think that one will be the foreground mountain, the one closest to us. Rub the others back a bit. Pleasant shape. I don't quite know which mountain is in front of the other here yet. Put a bit of sunlight on the side of them. I think that one will be in front most. And that one. I'll do this here. And with a smaller round brush, the number eight round brush, you put in much more delicate little trees. So again, we block out the bits of mountain that aren't real nice. I don't like that bit there. As soon as it fade off there, I don't like that bit there either. I'll move that. You just leave the bits that look alright. Up into there. Now I'll take the bigger brush. It's a bit quicker to block in the bigger tree for the bigger brush. Again, we've got this dish effect. Bring the eye into the middle. And I'll detail the bigger trees with the bigger brush first. 
I should work in this direction because if you work in this direction and the sunlight shining like that, if you work in this direction you cross out the trees as you do them. So you're better off starting here and working back away from your brush strokes. Also, while I'm putting this white on, what I'm looking for, my hand is putting the foliage on. There's no problem with the foliage. I can just put that on without worrying about it. But I'm looking for the tone of the brown. I don't want that very dark colour to stay there. So as I'm working over it with the white, I'm crossing out quite a lot of the brown. Not all of it, but enough to tone it down to make it look back further in the distance. Here, these colours here are much too dark for the dark for the background. So as I'm putting the white on, I'm toning them down. You can have a little bit of that dark colour in there, but not great big pieces of it like this. So I'm looking for shape and for tone at the moment. Again, I'm going to put the sunlight on the wrong side of the tree to attract your eye into the picture. When you're working, you might be making your painting up as you go along. And your trees on this side might look a lot better than the trees on that side. So you might want to leave them and put your big tree over there. So you constantly look for the best bit of the painting and the best bit you leave so you can see and the other you cover it up with the next item you're going to put on there. Now with the water, I've already rubbed that undercoat in there as I did with the sky. I rub a little bit of colour on the bottom and I blend it up slowly into the water. This is the reflection of the sky I'm blending up in here. But don't bring it up too high. We like to keep as much white as we can in the water. It gives you that glassy effect. So we blend that up underneath there. The land later will probably come down over a lot of this. Blend it up into the water. And the next is the reflections. We do the reflections before we do the banks. So the reflections here will come down into there, there. Reflections come straight towards you, straight towards where you're standing. Just roughly block them in. There's no need to go to a lot of trouble with the reflections. Sometimes you'll get a reflection when there's no tree there, so you can put a tree in later. But as long as they're reasonably close to what's on the bank, it looks all right. Just dob, 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 dob the brush on, paint your trees upside down in the water, just roughly. You can zigzag them if you want to sometimes, but this looks a bit better. It's going on quite well like that. Dob, 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 dob. There we are. Now, the big brush. This gives you the reflections in the water. A nice, clean, big brush. Keep it clean. Let me make sure it's got no dirty paint on it. Put it on the bank and pull it vertically down the board. Again. Again. Where the reflections are longer, you just make a longer brush stroke. Short reflections in the distance and longer here. So that's your reflections. Now we've got to do the bank. With a painting knife, pick up a bit of white and a bit of colour on your knife. Unload it along the bank, vertically like that. Pick up a bit of colour and a bit of white again. The only reason I'm picking up the two colours, I'm not mixing the colours together, I'm just picking them both up on the knife at once. Just so you get a variation of colours along the bank. And drag it along here. I'm plastering that on there. Pushing the knife hard is your wider line. I've got a blob there, I'll just remove that blob. So that's our distant bank. I'll dob the side of the brush, side of the knife in the dark paint, and then I'll get a dark line underneath the bank, just by unloading it like that. With some canvases you can lock the knife in the pores of the canvas, and you get a nice straight line by just following the grain of the canvas. If you can't do a straight line like that by unloading the knife by dragging along, just load the knife on the side with some paint and just dab it on. And that'll give you a straight line, a thin line. So that's our bank. And in the water we want some little ripples. So again I've dobbed the knife in white paint. And these ripples must be perfectly horizontal, parallel with the bottom of the board. If you have them running downhill, it looks like your water's running downhill. 
perfectly horizontal. And that doesn't look too good, too bad there. So what we've got, we've got the undercoat. Keep your undercoat horizontal. Rub your hand or your brush, whatever you're putting on with, horizontally. Your next layer of paint is your reflections. That's a perfectly vertical brush stroke. The next layer of paint is these little white lines, and they are again horizontal. So the three layers of paint give you a shining effect. And we'll fill in the land around here, just roughly. Quite a lot of paint because this is going to be grass here and you need a lot of paint to flick it up into grass. Always pick the whites towards the back of your landscape and the darks in the corner. And don't mix the paints completely when you come in here. Just put one on on top of the other. It's a much more interesting effect. Now I'll turn that into grass there with my fan brush. Dob, dob, dob along here. Touch it on there, it gives you a little grassy effect. The brush is dirty now, clean it. Dog, dog, dog along there. And again, as I come towards me, I'll become more vibrant with the stroke. Gives you a nice big grass effect. What you can do here too, is with your masking tape, you can put paint on the masking tape, and flick it up with your fan brush, and it'll give you the top of the grass on the canvas just the tips of the grass coming off into the canvas and later on when we take this masking tape off we'll just have the tips of the grass coming off into the canvas it looks quite nice I'll finish this off quickly brush is dirty again, clean it now we, all we're going to do now is put this big tree in and the branches and then background trees so again I load my painting knife with two colours the burnt umber on one side and the white on the other and I sculpture the tree, watching where I put it. I don't want to cut through anything and s destroy it, so we might come down through there and across there. Watching not to cut through this corner of the water there, or that intersection, we'll come down through there. Not too high, I'll destroy the cloud. And then curve it in to meet the other tree. You've got to be quite bold with a painting knife. I've run out of paint there, so I'll put a bit of more white paint up here. Load the knife again. I'll bring this one down through here, curving it into the picture. Again, keeping our eye curving into the picture. Just sculpturing that on there. If it doesn't work out, do it over again. That's not too bad. And give a nice big dark butt on that tree again. We'll be able to tidy that up in a minute. Load the small brush again, bringing it towards us, picking up both colours. Turn it vertical, just drop it on the paint, pull it up and twist it. Again. Australian gum trees have a jagged branch effect. They don't often have curved branches, so try to get this jagged effect Looks a bit funny if you, if you curve them. It doesn't look right. Uh, you just jag it, turn it, jag it, that type of effect. Any more branches. I've just about covered over them clouds, but it doesn't matter. We might have nice clouds in the next one. And I like this bit of bark hanging off the tree effect. Just put the brush on on the dark side, twist it to the whites touching the canvas and just drop it down a little bit. It's easy to do, that's something in practice. Put the dark on, twist it to the white touch if you drag it down. This is a barking and off the feet. I'm going to put the branches in these background trees, start in the middle. The brush is dirty, I'll load it again. Oh, a few dead trees though. If you have a branch and it overruns a tree, just turn it into a dead tree, it doesn't matter. It's very hard to know where to stop detailing a painting. And this is one of the secrets. And that's why I say don't worry about things when they go wrong. Often something goes wrong, you just cover it up later. But if you fiddle, fiddle, fiddle trying to get it right, you'll detail one part of the painting to such an extent that you can't get the rest of the painting to look like the bit you've detailed. So the rustic look, the look we're looking for, and when you're in the bush and you're noticing things, there's a lot of things you can't see, like a bit of wire on a fence often 
just disappears, your eye can't pick it up. So when you're putting wire on fences and things like that, you don't have to detail it completely. Same with branches. There's a lot of branches you can't see. They stop and start. So you don't have to detail everything completely. Take the picture as a whole. That'll do us background branches, and I'll throw a few little branches in down here, maybe a dead twig hanging over the water. It's the same brush stroke, just drag the brush along the paint and twist it and jag it around. Load both sides. Each time I'm wiping the brush too. I'm wiping it clean before I pick up paint each time. Now down here, a little bit of bark hanging off. Big blobs of paint hanging off. Looks like bark. Doesn't look like bark from here, but it will look like bark when the whole picture is finished. I'll tidy up the grass underneath there. Here's where you can cover up a lot of your mistakes. Just put grass over the top. And then all I've got to do now is put the big foliage on the top of the tree. I'm out of white paint again. Put a white paint. Load the big brush, dragging it towards me in the dark paint first. Turn it over. Pick up the white paint, dragging it towards me. Turn the brush completely over with the white on the side where you want the sun shining, which is that side, and dob it vertically on, making little mushroom shapes. Try not to cover that cloud too much, that's a nice little cloud there. Load the brush again, I think the brush can do. No, we're right. Don't overwork your painting, that's about one of the most mistakes that people make, is they keep working and working and working when it's not necessary. This painting is just about finished, and I think that'll do. I could put a little branches in there, you could if you want to, but I don't think it's very necessary. A little bit of foliage down the bottom looks nice too sometimes in amongst the trees. There we are. Now I'll sign that, and then we'll take the masking tape off. That's your name in the paint again. 85. Now I'll take the masking tape off. So that's the water. The important thing about the water is keep your undercoat thin, keep it horizontal, your brush stroke or hand stroke. Try and keep as much white as possible. You, I've just put a little bit of colour in there, but as much white as possible. If your white all disappears, you don't get that shiny water, so as much white as possible. You're better off having all white and no colour coming in than too much colour coming in. The reflections are vertical strokes which are four inch brush, straight down. It doesn't matter if they don't line up with the trees, as long as the whole picture looks all right. Don't worry about the reflections if there's nothing on the bank that is reflected in the water. Unless it's obvious, don't worry about it. If there's something in the water that's obvious and there's nothing on the bank, you can always put a tree on the bank to correspond with a the reflection. These white lines with the side of your painting knife, keep them perfectly horizontal. That'll give you your flat, shiny water effect. There we are, there's one with water. Next we're going to do a coloured one. But before we do these coloured ones, I'd like you to practice, practice these monocolour ones. The more you practice them, the better you'll be when you come on to colour. Colour is very confusing. If you can practice your brush strokes, so you can just put the paint on the canvas where you want it, you'll find it a lot easier to do the coloured ones. So now we'll do a nice coloured one. Again, I've masked out the piece of board that we want to do the painting on. I've got my palette up here with all the colours set out as I need them. This is the one we're going to copy again. Nice little painting. And we start in the usual way by rubbing the white right into the canvas to give us the sky. And again we bring it down two thirds of the way down the page. Right in this blue I'm going to use in the sky is a very strong colour. It's a pathalo blue and it's Enough in a whole tube to paint a house, I'd say. It's an extremely strong pigment. So I'm going to put just a little dob on the top of my finger. That's enough. You'll see that it quite easily colours all that white. Rub it well in. I almost put too much on there. You might find that you'll make that mistake straight off. You'll put too much of that heavy blue into the white and you won't be able to control it. It'll just take over the whole painting in blue. Now again, I'm having this white down here. I'm going to put a little bit of blue there, but not much, just a little bit. Another dog of blue, that'll give us the shades for the cloud. 
we get dark again. The white on the edge of my finger again gives that cloud effect. I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm getting quite fast at it. My clouds are all starting to look the same, but I don't mind. It's quite easy to run them off like that. Another little cloud down here. Brush them over again with a big clean brush. A bit of wind in the cloud there. Now for the distant mountains, we're going to use a cerulean blue. That's straight out of the tube and it's a bit dark, so I'll put it on first and then I'll lighten it with a bit of white. Rub it well into the canvas. Pick up a bit of white. And I'll tone it down until you can just see the distant mountains there. You try to keep the same tone as about the middle of the top of the sky with the distant mountains, no darker. It's another fault people make is their distant mountains too dark. It doesn't give them the perspective. The paler you can make the mountains, the lighter in tone you can make them, the further away they'll look. Now for these foreground mountains, we take the purple we previously mixed out of the ultramarine blue and the azillion crimson and rub it in over the white undercoat that we put on for the sky and give you the undercoat for the mountains. This purple is the other colour we mix. All the other colours are straight out of the tube and we put them on straight out of the tube. You can mix colours if you want to progress and mix your colours later, but this is an easy way to learn, learn to use the tools and learn to use the techniques. Now, this brush stroke I'm going to show you now is probably the most delicate brush stroke. It's quite a hard brush stroke to learn. With the little round number eight brush, you're going to pick up Naples yellow in the usual way by dragging the brush towards you and you have it on one side of the brush. Then you work out where your sun's coming from. It's coming from this direction. So you unload the brush in this dab, dab brush stroke and that gives us all them little trees on the top of the mountain. Now I'm going to show you how to do this brush stroke in a minute. And you should practice it. All over the mountain, same little brush stroke. It's just a lot of little mushrooms. Don't try and shape your mountain at this stage but try and get these little mushroom shapes all over the mountain with the sun shining on this side of them. I'll dob them on like that. And later on, we'll put the shadows on the mountain where the sun's not shining. And that'll give you your shape. You can follow the contour of the mountain as you come down with the brush. But don't try to detail your mountain at this stage. Just get it covered with these little daubs of Naples yellow over the purple. If you squint, you can see the dark bits of mountains that you don't need. You can work out the tones that are too dark by squinting. The first colour you see is either too bright or too dark as you open your eyes slowly. It doesn't look too bad there at the moment. Now that's it. Naples yellow all over the mountain, but the mountain hasn't any shape at the moment. Now if the sun's shining in this direction, the mountain won't have much light down this side, so if we touch it again with a brush, it knocks the sunlight off it. There might be a valley there, I'd say. That gives your mountain a little bit of shape. So that's the brush stroke. I'm going to show you over here how the brush stroke should work. So we'll put a little bit of undercoat down here. Rub it well in, as you would if you were doing a undercoat for a mountain. And I'll load the brush with the paint on one side, hold it almost vertically, and dab it. With this little dobs of paint effect. And as I'm doing it, I'm crossing out the darker tone of purple. The brush is doing the work as far as putting the paint on. I'm just watching that I cross out the purple. And that's your brush stroke for trees on distant mountains. Now we'll fill in the trees in front of the mountains, block them in again, crossing out the bits of mountains we don't like. I'm using the smaller brush here again. On a bigger painting you use a bigger brush. We'll go up there. 
This is a similar painting to the last brown one, one we done, but it's upright instead of long ways. You can do this in colour long ways, like the brown one too, if you like, for practice. That's the undercoat for the distant trees. I think I'll change to the bigger brush here. I'll pick up the chrome green. That was a purple I put on in there. Straight purple. Now I'll pick up the chrome green in the usual way, dragging the brush towards me, turn the brush completely over and put the sunlight on the top of the trees. Dab, 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 dab. Try not to make them look like soldiers. Have the trees slightly different shapes. I'm turning the brush slightly there sometimes to get a bit more paint to roll off. Clean the brush, pull it into a chisel point as you clean it. Pick the paint up again. Again. So that's the same brush stroke as in the monocolour paintings. I'm just using colour, chrome green straight there. Again, I'm bringing the sunlight down the wrong side of the tree to keep your interest in the middle of the picture. I'll quickly fill this in here. You keep this mushroom, mushroom, mushroom shape. You find it looks like gum trees. So that's the distant trees. That's a pretty green, that. Now for the water. Same thing again. Rub the white undercoat well in. I'm going to take the water off in this direction, so I'll rub it over here. Come up underneath the trees. Put a bit of dirt on my finger there, so I'll just clean the thing and make sure I don't get the water dirty. Most importantly, get it white. So that's the undercoat for the water. And then there's blue. This is the Pathalo blue again, the very strong blue. I'll put a bit down there, a little bit in the water. Not much, just enough to tint the water. Now the reflections. Paint everything upside down roughly. Again, don't worry too much if it's not exactly the same. You could go to a lot of trouble and make it exactly the same if you want to, but then when you have a mistake, it doesn't look so good. Brush again, the vertical brush stroke. And again. Now we're going to use Indian yellow and white to finish the bank on the other side. I've loaded the knife with Indian yellow and white. I picked up the Indian yellow first and then the white. I didn't mix the colours, but as I apply them to the board, they will mix themselves. They won't mix completely, so that'll give us a variation in colour along the bank. It's a bit thick there, I'll take a bit off. That paint's standing right out off the board there. There's a lot of paint on there. Also on this foliage, I don't know whether you can see, but the paint stands well out off the board. As you dab your brush on and lift it off, the paint stands off the board. In a dark line, we're using the purple as the dark line underneath the bank. That Indian yellow is a brilliant colour. If you mix it with the white, it goes dull. So the idea is to just put the white and the Indian yellow on both together without completely mixing them. And just touch that up along there and then we'll finish the rest of the bank. Quite nice. Indian yellow and white both on the finger again. And again. And we'll make the corners dark. There's a little bit of purple I'll rub in there. Here you can run a little bit of burnt sienna in there. And I'd like that a bit whiter up there to give us a bit of perspective. That's better. And of course. The white lines running along, perfectly horizontal white lines are under the bank. Yeah. With a fan brush, we turn this into grass. It's the same brush stroke. Don't overwork it, just come forward with a bigger brush stroke as you come forward. 
I'll put some colour on that masking tape now, and that'll give us a bit of a darker foreground, which gives you a better perspective again. Now, for the big tree. We're going to lay that painting knife this time with several colours. I'll pick up some of the purple and I'll mix it down here. I'll put it there. I'll pick up a bit of burnt sienna and put it with it. That'll do. Then I'll mix them together. This is going to be the bark. I'm not mixing them completely. I've just loosely mixed them. So as I pull the knife down, the bark will change colour. So I'll pick up the dark first. You notice I'm constantly wiping my knife. And then I'll pick up a lighter colour. Pick up a bit of white out of there. And a bit of Naples yellow. And then I'll have a good look at my knife to make sure it's well loaded. That's right. And I'll sculpture the tree down through here. Again, not cutting across any points or destroying anything. We'll cut it down through here. We're going to use this forky tree again. It's a good tree to practice with. And up here. And just sculpture the tree on. You can see the colours changing there, the different colours I've put on. Touch up a little bit missing. You can either touch them up or turn them into bark with your little brush. Touch that one up. Load the knife again. Colours. Check to see if it's loaded properly. It's not loaded properly. I'll load it properly. Important that the knife is loaded properly. That's right. Adequate paint. And another tree will sculpture in there. Oh, the same tree. With a fork. Put in the butt. And I'm happy with this white here on this side. I'm a bit lazy on loading my knife. If I'd have loaded it properly in the first place, this wouldn't have happened. There we are. Now, the little round brush again. I'm going to load it with a few colours this time. We've got white, purple, a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of Naples yellow. And that'll give us a nice variation of colours in the branches. Again, pull the brush up. Just let it stick to the paint. Drag it up. Let the gravity pull the paint off the brush. Don't try and force it. Load it again. And a few more branches. I'll throw these on quickly. You've seen them done before, so... We'll get on with it. And the background trees, the branches in there. We have a dark spot there. I'll put quite a few branches in that dark spot. These background branches, they always go on the dark bit of the tree. Just a few, not too many. Just enough to make it look like a tree. You can have a dead branch hanging out the top of the tree. It looks nice sometimes. A few little branches on the ground. All we've got to do again is put the foliage on the top of this tree. This time I'm going to put the foliage on the top of the tree. I'm going to lay my big brush with a lot of different colours. And with a bit of practice you can get some beautiful effects. Your wattle effects and different tree effects. I'm going to put purple on one side, pulling the brush towards me. Chrome green on the other side. And then I'll touch up the bit where the sun is with a bit of Naples yellow. Maybe a little bit of white. I'll have a look here. I've got purple on that side and three colours on that side. So that should give us an interesting effect. Load the brush again. Four colours. And 
It's just a dab dab brush stroke. There's not a lot of brush strokes to learn, so if you master each of them, you can put the paint exactly where you want it. I'm putting this corner in to make it uninteresting. You don't need interesting things in the corner. You want anything interesting into the middle of the picture. Now tidy up the corners. Might put a bit of bark hanging off that tree on Yeah, with a little brush. A little bit of bark hanging here and there. A few branches at the top of the tree too, a few missing there. That's not a bad painting. Sign it again. Now notice how I've got the corners uninteresting, that's quite important. If you have anything interesting in the corner, it distracts from the rest of the picture and people's eye wander off onto something else. 85. So, I'll pull the masking tape off now. That's your first colour painting. After looking at this painting for a moment, there's a couple of things I'm not real happy with. It's the top of the tree here. I think a bit more foliage over this area where the dark joins the light would look a lot better. So I'll reload my big brush, a few colours, and just put a bit of foliage in over that bit that I don't like. Looks a bit better. Maybe a bit over here too. I'm going to put some branches in there. I'll probably them. I'll cut the couple of little branches. And that looks better. Now for the little cottage in the bush scene. Nice little scene. First we start by rubbing the undercoat to the forest well into the canvas, like we do when we're doing sky or water. Well in. I'm going to give us a tone here of the light showing in the forest. And the idea is to have it a nice light tone, and that makes it so you can see well into the forest. A little tiny bit of purple. purple. Uh, not much. A little bit of Naples yellow, there'll be a little bit of sun showing in there. You don't have to put it anywhere in particular, just as long as you put a bit of colour on all over where the forest is. That's a bit dark there, so we're going to have to put some deeper foliage in that area now. And a little bit up there. And what you see is all the branches. So we'll load the little brush and we just put on lots and lots of little branches. You don't have to do them well because a lot of them will be covered up with foliage. So we we'll put a lot on and the, the good ones we'll leave there and the ones that don't look so good we'll cover them up with foliage. Heaps of little branches. Purple, Naples, yellow, a bit of white. Most of them go straight up and down. There's a few that goes across a bit. And that gives us something to work on. Now we're going to, with a little round brush, pick up a little bit of purple on one side, turn it over, pick up a little bit of Naples, yellow. With this little dab dab brush stroke, you can have distant foliage in the bush. A bit dark there. I'll put more Naples yellow on that. So we'll put this foliage in and we'll cross out the bits of trees that we don't like, the little branches that aren't so good, we'll cross them out. Or the one there is a bit too dark, we'll cover that one up. This is the sun shining on the distant bushes in the forest. I'm sloping in the in again, keeping the eye into the middle. So the ones from this side, I'll slope them in this way, and the ones from the other side, I'll slope them the other way. Dab, 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 dab. Load the brush purple on one side, maple gel on the other again. I'm going to put some more branches in here to touch them up later. 
finish it off. Start there again. So that's the forest look, the distant forest look. Quickly finish it off. You can get a lot of trouble if you want to and do them neatly all in place. Make little, little individual bushes if you want to. But I find it's quicker just to get the paint on and then continue on with the other parts of the picture. So that'll do us for forest. Bit of Indian yellow and chrome green. more Indian yellow there. I'm going to put a bit of white in amongst that Indian yellow in a moment and that'll give us a bit of distance. Doesn't look a lot like a forest yet but it will when we put the bigger trees in. As I come down towards the corners I go darker. There's a bit of burnt umber I put in there. A bit of purple on top. And we can quickly turn that into grass. That brush is dirty, I must clean it. A lot of the work you do is covered over, like a lot of those forest scrubs there will be covered over big trees from a little cottage in a moment. So you pick the best out of them, try not cover over the good ones. The grass. Now for the little cottage, I'm using this flat brush, the number eight flat brush. Little cottage is just a little box with a roof on. So first you draw a box. It's pointed there with a roof. So that's the basic shape of the walls of the cottage. And then for the roof, you have burnt sienna and white. Put them both together like that and just look for the colour that you want. That looks like the colour of corrugated line. So we'll pick that bit up and just place it on like a sheet of iron. Clean your brush, pick another piece up and place it on like a sheet of iron. Each brush stroke you're putting a sheet of iron on the shed or the house. And another one. Get more burnt sienna in there, look nice. And the veranda, the same thing. Each brush stroke is a sheet of iron. And we'll have a little water tank too. Like that. That water tank will have a shadow on this side, I'd say. We'll darken it a bit there. There'll be a bit of a shadow under the tank. A bit of dark under the veranda of the house. And I'll pick up a bit of white, a bit of Naples yellow, and just put a bit of light where the windows are going to be and the door. Now that's basically the flat brush strokes on your house and the next is the little round brush strokes which will detail the house. I'll pick up a bit of purple on one side, white on the other, just unload your brush along the top of the roof, down the back. Sometimes the line comes out dark, sometimes it comes out light, it doesn't matter. You haven't got a lot of control over it. Up that side, across the roof, across the veranda, and then the windows. A few horizontal lines. A few vertical lines. Then the veranda posts. That one will look better if it was a bit darker, so I'll put a bit of purple on there. I'm loading the brush with two colours all the time. Everything's from light to dark, as the sun's shining on one side of each object. A few rails on the veranda. Posts under the tank. A few white lines.
and a bit of detail up the roof. Other bits of timber. And that's not a bad little house. They never look much good unless you tidy the grass up around them. Makes them look a little bit more real. There we are. Now, for the big tree, we take our painting knife. And because it's such a big tree, we're going to do it in two sections. We'll put the dark on first, and then we'll put the light on. Put the dark on. And then the light. I'm picking up the white with a burnt sienna in it that we prepared for the iron on the roof. I'll put it down beside there. And down beside there. More white. That's not white enough. I'll touch it up again. There. In the big butt of the tree. Dark and underneath the tree, so it looks like it does go into the ground. And with a little brush, put on these branches on the big tree. Not dark enough, that's quite a big branch there. It would do three or four brush strokes, it might take to get a big branch finished. There we are. A few more branches. This area here is not very exciting, so we're going to have to put foliage there in a moment, but I'll make sure I try to keep everything facing in. A bit of bark on the bottom of the tree. And a few branches laying under the bottom of the tree. It's a jagged brush drag again, load two colours on the brush and twist it as you unload it. Now for fence, I load the knife similar to what I do when I'm doing a tree trunk with light on one side and dark on the other. And fence posts again keep them sloping in without destroying anything. We'll put one here. Load the knife again, cleaning it each time. Another one there. A bit of white to look on the, nice on the side of that post. I'll put a bit more light on that one. There you are. I didn't have my knife clean. It didn't come out white. That's better. And another post here, sloping into the picture. A couple of rails laying on the ground. The light on top of them. I'm going to put foliage on the top of this tree to finish it off. Maybe a few branches in the background in a moment. I'll load the brush with the dark on one side again, pulling the brush towards me as I load it, and the light. Put the dark on first, then the light. I put purple, chrome green, and now a bit of Naples yellow. I'll drop a bit of foliage in there, sloping into the picture again. Reload the brush. This paint is quite thick. We've got three layers of paint now, and on top of the other. If I muck around with it, it'll all go muddy. So the idea is to get it on in one brush stroke, and don't touch it after that. If you fiddle with your painting, you won't get the effect required. Over this side, I'll bring foliage in over here to cover up this bit that's not very exciting, and I'll slope it in. A few little flowers on the ground, Naples yellow, crown green. Dab, 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 brush stroke. Now a few branches and then background trees and that painting will be finished again.
And there's our little cottage in the bush. I think I'll touch up the grass around the bottom a bit, cover over that log a bit. If you want to do a fence post and put a hole in it, just do the post and then scratch the hole in with your knife. Like that. Them holes shouldn't be there actually, the posts are facing the other way, so I'll cover them up again. And if you want to do wire on the fences, just touch the knife in the edge with white paint. draw straight lines like that. If the wire doesn't work and you can't quite see it in places, don't worry because wire is quite hard to see in the bush anyway. There we are, little cottage in the bush. Sign the corner. And pull the masking tape off. The sunset's the next one we're going to do. Start it from the bottom of the sky this time. And you're white. Keep it very low too. Sunsets lend themselves to outback scenes, so the sky comes down very low into a plain effect usually. A bit of white, not a lot of white, just where you're going to have the brilliant colour in that area. I'm putting the white on a bit thicker here because you can get a nice bright effect by putting the white on a little bit thicker and running the Indian yellow over the top of it. You get that brilliant sun effect. Because sunsets lend themselves to outback scenes, there's not a lot of trees, so you don't have a lot of difficulty painting your trees over the thick paint on the sky. That's why we keep the sky thin so we can paint over the top easily. Don't try and shape your sky too much at this stage because when we finish what we're doing here we're going to brush it over with a big brush and that gives us the, the bright colours again. So I put on white, Indian yellow, a little bit of white over the top at this stage. Now, Alazillian crimson comes in now up around the top, quickly rub it in. And as the sky comes up, it gets into a darker colour. We'll go to a bit of purple up in the corner. The wood's darker in the corner. So that's basically our sunset sky. Now we'll detail it a little bit. We'll have a few clouds up here, filling the bit where I've missed the paint. A few clouds there. You know how to do the clouds, just round and round. A few bright streaks up here, I'd say. Dark there, I'll knock that out with a bit of bright over the top. And then on the horizon, we're trying to get a white line, a nice bright bit. Now I'm going to brush it out with a big brush. I'll clean the big brush first, just make sure there's no colours I don't need on there. And I'll give it that up effect. Guys, always look better when you put the foreground in. It gives them a perspective. There we are. Now for the horizon. Nice straight horizon. We're going to have some water in there, so I'll put that undercoat in a second. There's the undercoat full of water. Should have been a bit whiter than that. A bit more white would be nice. Then I'll come around here with the ground. The soil is red or gold, so I'll put red and gold into the soil and the foliage will go over the top of the soil. I'm going to brush the water in first, just to let me know where I'm going to put it. And we'll detail that water again later. Now out back you get a lot of little bushes that are blue, they get a blue tint. 
I'm going to mix this cerulean blue with a little bit of white, but I'm not going to mix it completely. I'm just going to mix it enough so I'm picking the two colours up at once. And then with a big flat brush, I'll squeeze it into a chisel point. I'll give us those little blue bushes on the horizon. Out in the deserts, the little bushes all seem to be planted at equal distance apart. So if your bushes look like they're regimented or like little soldiers, it doesn't matter. Because that's how they are out west on many occasions. Now I'm going to load my brush with purple on one side and the cerulean blue and white on the other. And that'll give us the closer up bushes. They get bigger as they come closer. The brush strokes are bigger, more vibrant. When you learn to do the brush strokes, it's only a matter of assembling the picture. So it's very important to practice these brush strokes so you can put the paint where you want it without having to dabble with it. I'll detail the water a bit now. There's a dark line. Because we're going to have dead trees, we're going to have a few reflections in the water. So I'll put the reflections in first and then put the trees to match them. Just a few reflections there. Touch them up with a big brush again. A bit dark there, won't matter. out of white paint again. A few white lines. So that's the foliage on the ground. Now for these big rocks the two Aboriginals sitting on them. You start with a dark colour first. Make your rocks an interesting shape. Slope them into the picture. And come around there. It doesn't matter where you put the dark. You just put the dark on and then you make the rocks up out of what you've got. So that looks like a rock coming up here and a rock going along there. Maybe another rock there. So to detail them, you put where the sun's shining on the rocks. I'm picking up a bit of white and a bit of burnt sienna on the palette knife, of the painting knife at the same time. And I'll put the sun shining on the top of that rock. Now if it doesn't work out as you want it, it doesn't matter because you can just touch it up to whatever you want. And often your mistakes are an asset. You'll see something in a mistake that you can correct and it looks a lot better than what you imagined it would look. A few colours down here. Maybe a bit more sunlight on them rocks would look nice up through there. Now the bits of the rocks that don't look real well I'm not worried about because I can put foliage over the bits that don't look too good. Just a bit more sunlight there I'd say. Things down neatly. There we are. Now, I'm going to do these two Aboriginals sitting on the rock here. This guy's going to be sitting down and his brother here will be standing up behind him. Start by painting his head. Just a round ball. And his back curved. He's got one knee up. And he's sitting on the other knee, on the other leg, like that. You draw stick figures and then detail them. You'd have an elbow on his knee and he'd have another hand holding his spear. Now to make it look more like an Aboriginal we'll give him a bushy hair and a protruding jaw. A little bit of muscle on his arm couple of spears. Now 
Now his brother came up here above him. I'll put his head right in the middle of that light coloured cloud there. That'll make it stand out. As good as you make these paintings up as you go along. You can correct your mistakes and you can use things like that little white cloud to your advantage. After you learn this technique, you'll be able to go into the field and paint viewed landscapes. But this is very handy technique to learn to use the tools. He's standing up straight, so I've got a straight line and there's his foot. Now from the middle of his body, his leg will go straight out and his other foot is on his knee. Typical Aboriginal stance. He'll have one hand on his knee and the other hand's holding his spears again. Like that. So we've got a little stick man. Put a little bit of muscle on him. Tidy up his hair. Give it an Aboriginal shape pose. And this guy's got too big a head. So what we'll do, we'll make him a bigger fella. Bring his leg down further. This way you can correct your mistakes. It's a bit better. And a couple of spears. Now for these background trees. Do the ones that we have reflections first, for first. There's one there, one there, possibly one there, one there, there, and then the rest. I'm picking up two colours here, just unloading the brush in a little straight line. Slide them in if you want to. And as they come towards you, they get bigger. A few branches on them. bigger ones. There we are. Now I'll do the foliage around these rocks here now. Then we're going to put a tree up there from the stand under. Load my brush, big brush, with a bit of purple on one side, turn the brush over, load green on the other side. Purple first, then the green, and we can get this foliage. I didn't need the purple there actually because I've got the purple already on the rock, so it would have been alright if I'd have just loaded it with a green. That's chrome green I'm using there. It was quite nice in there. Put a bit of blue back in there again. Now I'll put a bit of foliage on this tree over here too, just to balance it a bit. I think I might make that tree a bit longer in a moment too. Tends to be out of perspective. A little brush. Oh. And it's slightly longer. That's better. Now the big tree up behind the fellas, I'll load my painting knife, two colours. Um, we've got purple, a little bit of burnt sienna, a bit of white. A little tree coming in here over the top of them. Lodged in the rocks. And with a little round brush, a few more branches again. I don't want to cover that sky up too much, there's quite a nice bit of cloud up there, so I'll get the tree in this direction over this purple bit that's not really interesting. Put a bit of blue in there too. Actually, the trees out west are usually more umbrella shape, but it doesn't matter. Put a foliage on the trees. Something going on there, I don't know what it is. It's a, you know. Sloping the foliage in again, sloping the rocks in again, the guys are looking in again. Everything facing into the middle of the picture makes it a much more interesting scene. A couple of twigs on the ground, I think it'll look alright. A 
read. And there's a sunset. You can use that same sky to put in cottages in the sunset or distant buildings, little sheds. Sunsets always lend themselves to outback scenes. They always look nice in the outback scene. There we are. I'll sign that. This is the waterfall we're going to do now. Like all these scenes, it might turn, it mightn't turn out exactly the same as the sample picture that I've shown you, but we'll do a waterfall using the same method, and we'll put the tree on the same side, or maybe the other side. So we'll just try and make it a waterfall like this. Don't try and copy my pictures exactly. Just copy the arrangement, and if it doesn't work out exactly the same as mine, it doesn't matter because it's very hard to make two pictures exactly the same. First, we rub in the distant forest up the top. Rub the white right in. A little bit of purple on your finger, not much because we just want to tone it. Maybe a little bit of Naples yellow, give you a bit of sunlight shining through there. And again, with a little round brush, we'll make the branches like we did when we were doing the forest scene. And with a bigger round brush, a bit of purple on one side, a bit of Naples yellow on the other, we get that little forest look. Nice little brush stroke happening there. Often when you're painting a picture you'll get a a perfect bit of foliage here and there and a perfect tree here and there but never have I painted a perfect picture so you will never get it perfect and you'll be your greatest critic don't fiddle with your work don't fiddle 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 trying to get it perfect it'll never happen that'll do for the background foliage I can rub this in with my fingers if I want to. That's the background trees. I'm going to go over them with chrome green. With bright foliage. I don't expect you to paint a picture as fast as I do. You might want to fiddle with it a little bit and just touch up little pieces. You might want to work all day on one picture. The more you do, the better you'll get. So the idea is if a picture is not going too well, and it's completely frustrating, throw it away and start another one. There we are. Now, down behind the waterfall, you'll have a, a dark area. And up behind the rocks, there's a lot of darkness in the rocks, so we'll put that in first. Careful not to dirty this area down here, because that's where we want our water. I'm sloping in all the time, sloping in. I'll clean my finger now. I'll put the undercoat on for the water at this stage. Just white. And although there's no sky up there, I'm still going to put a little bit of blue down here in the water. If you're standing up on a cliff and you're looking down into the water, you may see the reflection of the sky. So we'll put it in there anyway. And down behind the waterfall, we'll turn that down a little bit and make it a little bit lighter. Now the rocks are next. Similar to the rocks we've done with the Aboriginal scene, the sunset. 
We'll do the dark part of the rocks first and slope them always in. No need to try and shape your rocks. Just slope bits of dark in. That was the purple I put on first. Now I'm going to put burnt umber over the top, on the top of each bit of purple. And then I'm going to pick up white and burnt sienna at the same time. I'll put it there and pick up the pieces I want. That'll give me the sun shining on the top of the rocks. The rocks haven't formed any good shape yet. What you're doing is the least manner of least number of strokes of a knife as you can and then you might see a few rocks happening there. Well, that looks like a rock down there, one down there, up there and up there. Now we're going to have the water coming over and after we do the water then we can detail our rocks. Now the trick with the water is take your fan brush, clean it and then dirty it in this blue. That's the phthalo blue. Give it a wipe reasonably clean and pick up a big hunk of white. Pick more. I've got a lot of white paint on there. Drop it on where the water starts and just pull your brush down and the paint will run off like water running down over the rocks. So you follow the rocks as far as you know them at this stage. When you want to change direction, you can turn your brush over and come down there. So that's an arrangement done. We just have to detail it now. Well, if the water was splashing down there, there'd be a big rock there. So we'll put a big rock there. A bit of purple, a bit of burnt umber, a bit of red in that. Doesn't matter. A bit of burnt sienna and white. And that gives us that rock there, the water's running over. Put a few rocks down the bottom here where the water's flashing on. I'm not worried about that there because that'll be reflection. Now, after having a good look at it, we can put the sunlight shining on all these rocks. There'd be sunlight shining there. Uh, all up here, the sunlight shining on that rock there. There we are. Good enough as far as rocks go. All this area here you can fill in with foliage. You get a bit of trouble and select all pretty colours and have little flowers and everything, but we're just going to fill it in with chrome green at the moment. That's the dab dab brush stroke. All the bits of rock that don't look interesting, just cover them over. Facing in all the time, facing in. So that's our rocks water running over it. We'll deal detail it later and make it look a little bit more neater. Now I'm going to do the reflections down here at the stage. A bit more dark. As that's facing in like that, I think the reflections come in that angle there like that. Green. And you've got your burnt sienna and white here and there. You can copy everything up there and put it down there if you want to, but it doesn't look much different if you can just put it on in a haphazard method. Clean the big brush, put it in the middle, flip it down. Again. And again. So that's your reflections. Clean your painting nice, pick up some white, this white's got a little bit of blue in it, which helps. And give you these splashes down the bottom here. The ripples. The dark line always looks nice along the bank. And a few more ripples in the water, I'd say. 
So that's basically your waterfall. You have to come in here with your rocks. So pick up your dark colours. Get the Indian yellow underneath. So when you make your brush strokes for your grass, you get a little bit of Indian yellow in there too. So and a bit of purple over the top. Any shape, doesn't matter. A bit of burn umber. Any colours you might find in rocks. Keep it dark. It gives you a perspective on the rest of the picture. Now I'm going to put the sunlight on the rocks. Here you have to be a little bit more particular where you put it. Sunlight about there, I'd say, or there. Not as I want it yet. There. There. Now the grass, to detail our rocks. That grass has to have a bit more colour in there. We'll put that in in a moment. Maybe rather than put colour in, we'll put a bit of foliage in there. A few little flowers. A couple of colours. And then that big tree. We had the big tree down here on the other painting. But on this one, we've got more, more room over here. We might put the big tree down this side, I'd say. So I'll take my painting knife and clean it. I need a bit more purple there. Because it's such a big tree, I'll put the purple on first. And I'll put the other colours on later. Down there. white. Bit of burnt sienna on my knife to make it dirty and burnt sienna. Pick up white and place the sunny side of the tree on. And the butt of the tree. Two branches again. Two colours on the knife at once, on the brush at once, I should say. Now I can see that this tree isn't the right shape, so I'm gonna have to tidy it up a bit. That's a bit better. Get a bit of bark around this part of it. Okay. All I've got to do is put the branches in these background trees. And then have a look at it to make sure there's nothing completely out of perspective. Doesn't look too bad. The branch up here looks nice. Putting these branches in the dark bits of the trees, not too many of them. Just enough to suggest branches, that's all. Picked a bit of paint up there off the big tree, a bit of paint that's hanging off, and I use it to my advantage by picking it up and using it for a branch. No branch hanging over the water always looks nice. there we are. Tidy up the waterfall a bit, down the bottom. Now have a look at that to see if there's anything wrong with it. Now that'll do at this stage. I could fiddle around with it forever, but it looks all right as it is. I'll sign it and that's another one finished. So basically what I've shown you is how to paint skies, background mountains, foreground mountains, background trees, foreground trees, water, fences, grass, big trees, little cottages. 
So if you practice each of these items, you'll be able to make your own arrangements. You can arrange them in any scene you like. You put a sunset in there if you want to with a red water. You can do a waterfall over here and your cottage over there. There's so many arrangements you can do. Remember, you need a lot of paint. So don't skimp on paint, put plenty on your palette, be bold, and if you find you're making a mistake, use the video to your advantage. Go back, find where you're making the mistake, and then continue. Practice your brush strokes until you can put the paint on confidently, without worrying about it, and then you can concentrate on arrangement and colour. I hope you have a lot of fun painting in this manner.